Hi, I'm Randall Strassen, president of IronMind. I'm here with Eric Oxenball to show you how to use the Super Squats Hip Belt. IronMind developed the Super Squats Hip Belt in 1990 after publishing the book Super Squats, How to Gain 30 Pounds of Muscle in Six Weeks. Super Squats mentions hip belt squats as an alternative to back squats, and they are perfect for people with back problems, upper body injuries, or those who don't have squat racks and spotters. The Super Squats Hip Belt removes the back from the squat because the weight is supported by the hips. So there is zero load in your spine and zero load on the lumbar region. It is also very safe because the weight is always under you, so you don't have to worry about getting crushed if you can't stand up with the weight. And because it's very demanding on your legs, a little weight goes a long way. We are going to show you how to put on the Super Squats Hip Belt. It's easy to do and after you've done it a couple of times, you'll be a pro and could do it in the dark. The Super Squats Hip Belt has five pieces. The belt itself with strap and buckle, the belt goes around your hips, two daisy chains, which are a series of nylon loops, these attach to the weight, two carabiners or clips, kind of like big safety pins, these connect the daisy chains to the belt. First, let's take a closer look at the belt itself. There are two loops or eyes, one at each end, the cinch strap and the buckle. Also notice that there is a loop on the back of the belt at the center for attaching a carabiner. Now let's put on the belt. First, unbuckle the belt completely so that the strap is hanging loose. Position the belt around your waist and hips so that the buckle is on your left side and the strap is on your right. You'll be looking at everything in reverse. Ideally, you want a gap of a few inches between the ends of the belt as you hold it around your hips. If the ends touch, you won't be able to tighten the belt correctly, so you will need a smaller size. If the gap is too big, say 8 or 10 inches or more, a larger size would be more comfortable for you. You might be tempted to place the belt around your waist, but for maximum comfort, position it lower, letting the bone structure of your hips and the flush area of your glutes support the belt. The belt will settle down in your hips when it's under the load of your training weight. The sewn in loop which is under the Super Squats label should be at the center of your back. Secure the belt tightly around your hips for squats by lacing it up. Take the cinch strap at the right, bring it across your abdomen and up through the loop or eye on the left pulling and tightening the strap as you go. Bring the strap across your abdomen, back over to the right, and down through the loop on the right side of the belt, continuing to cinch up the belt. Bring the strap back to the left and up through the loop on the left side, just as you did before. Continue lacing the strap up through the left loop, down through the right, until you have about six inches of strap remaining. You'd like to go around two or three times. The belt should be cinched tightly with a small gap between the ends. Now secure the strap by threading it through the buckle. To make sure it doesn't slip, do what's called the double pass by bringing the cinch strap back through the buckle like this to secure it. Now you're ready to hook up your weight. There are many options for doing this and we will demonstrate the two most popular methods. The most traditional method uses a barbell. This gives you something like a front squat, hack squat, or sissy squat groove and targets the muscles just above the knee. Here's where you need the carabiners. The part of the carabiner that opens is called the gate. You want to clip one carabiner through the rear loop with the gate pointing down. Clip the other carabiner over the straps in the front of your belt. Again rotating the carabiner so that the gate opening is pointing down and away from your body. The reason for these gate positions is that it is easier to clip the daisy chains in and out. Also, the carabiner gate won't accidentally open if pressed against your body. The next step is to connect the daisy chains to the weight you'll be using. For a barbell, you'll do this by tying two bail hitches or slip knots around the bar, one in front, one in back. Eric is demonstrating with a 7-foot Olympic bar, but you can use something shorter like an easy curl bar as it is less likely to rock or sway. The bail hitch is very easy to do. Put the daisy chains under the bar and bring the yellow loops up through the red loop and then cinch it up tight. The bail hitch allows you to easily adjust the daisy chains by sliding them back and forth to balance your barbell when it's not under load. When you stand up with the weighted barbell, the daisy chains cinch up tight and hold the bar in place. By the way, you'll be using much less weight for hip belt squats than you would for regular back squats. Start with something light until you get used to the movement. We've got 40 kilos, 88 pounds on the bar for this demonstration. We're also using a set of homemade pulling blocks for a loading system. The final step is to clip the daisy chains into the carabiners. This may seem a bit awkward at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Straddle the center of the barbell, sink down on top of it, 
and clip the rear daisy chain into the carabiner hanging from the back loop. Then clip the front daisy chain into the carabiner in the front of your belt. Be sure to clip into the daisy chain so that the barbell is as high as possible. If the barbell is hanging low around your knees, the plates will hit the floor before you break parallel in your squats. You can also use smaller diameter plates for more clearance. Once you are hooked in, carefully stand up and test whether the barbell is balanced. If it isn't right, lower down and adjust the daisy chains as needed. When you're all set, step to the side of your loading system. Now you're ready to squat. Give yourself time to learn this movement as it requires a little practice. Also, even if you can do regular barbell squats flat-footed, you may find that you need to wear weightlifting shoes or something else with a heel, or place a thin board or a barbell plate under your heels if you want to squat below parallel. If you put something under your heels, be sure to test it beforehand and also to have everything arranged before you're hooked up to your barbell. Continue with your squats until you're finished, and then lower the bar to the loading system or the floor. Sink down and unclip. Earlier I mentioned that the advantage of squatting with the super squat tip belt is that the weight is always underneath you, so it's very safe, perfect if you're squatting alone. Get used to the movement before you add weight, and then work up slowly. You can also hang the weight just in front, which gives you more of a back squat groove. It's easier for most people to do this flat-footed. You can leave the belt looser for this setup, more like what you would use for weighted chins or dips. To do this, you just attach a carabiner to a weight stack like this and clip it into the daisy chain or directly onto the front straps of the belt. Eric is also demonstrating that you can stand on something to increase your range of motion. Many things will work for this purpose. Just make sure that what you use is both strong and secure. There you have it, Iron Mind Super Squats Hip Belt. And it's not just for squats. The Super Squats Hip Belt is a very versatile piece of equipment that can be used for dips, chins, calf work, and hip lifts. It also improves your vertical jump, and you can even use it for pulling or dragging. There are many reasons to use the Super Squat Hip Belt. It's easy, effective, safe, and multifunctional. And like all Iron Mind products, it's made in the USA. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope you enjoy your Super Squat Hip Belt for many years of productive training. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us.